Administering neuromodulators requires accessing the medication vial multiple times. Multiple dose vials require special treatment to maintain asepsis and ease of withdrawal of the injectate. Both new and seasoned injectors require an understanding of container mechanics when accessing multi-dose vials. The frustration of dealing with large air bubbles in the syringe can be easily avoided when a few basic principles are adhered to. Remember that all aseptic techniques begin with proper hand hygiene, and exam gloves are not required for medication preparation. The CDC recommends that medication is drawn up in a designated clean medication preparation area that's not adjacent to potential sources of contamination, including sinks or other water sources. Additionally, this area should have ready access to necessary supplies, such as alcohol-based hand rub, needles, syringes in their sterile packaging, and alcohol wipes to ensure adherence to aseptic technique. Once the neuromodulator's been reconstituted, here's what you'll need to pull up a patient's doses. The neuromodulator, appropriate delivery syringes, and alcohol preps. Before accessing a medication file, you first need to wipe the rubber stopper with a 70% alcohol wipe. Even when the vial's first opened, you must wipe the stopper with the alcohol because the manufacturer doesn't guarantee sterility. Always re-wipe with alcohol if you've turned your back or walked away from the vial. This is the medical standard of care. While allowing the alcohol to dry, remove the cap from the end of the syringe and be careful to only touch the flange of the plunger. Touching the shaft of the plunger can contaminate the syringe. Let's take a look at the rubber stopper. You can see on the top of the stopper there's a bullseye. This is the area you should always penetrate with your needle because it's the thinnest part of the stopper. You can see that the area outside of that bullseye is very thick. That increased thickness will do two things. One, it will dull the needle, making injections very uncomfortable for your patient, and two, since most Botox needles are around six millimeters long, you won't be able to access the volume since the needle isn't long enough to penetrate that full length of the stopper. Prior to removing any of the medication in a vial, you'll need to insert air into that vial. And why? Because we want to prevent a vacuum from forming inside the bottle. For example, if we repeatedly withdraw solution from the vial, a vacuum begins to form and the liquid becomes difficult and ultimately impossible to withdraw without the creation of air bubbles. The question then becomes, how much air do I inject? And you should always inject at least the same volume of air that you plan to withdraw in liquid. For example, I plan to withdraw 0.2 cc's of liquid, so I will inject 0.2 cc's of air prior to my withdrawal. Now you'll see that my withdrawal is much easier to execute and there are hardly any air bubbles that I have to contend with. 